Now at 10, we learn details about a mi mystery unsolved in Missouri nearly 100 years ago. Plus, coffee lovers and local artists spend the day at Root Coffee House painting at a painting class. And we get a behind the scenes look at a Pittsburgh Community Theater play as they prepare for showtime. The four states most watched news starts now. Missouri authorities say a semi truck driver was injured after a turkey went through his windshield, causing him to crash. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Anthony Saviello. It happened around 1 p.m. Wednesday on I-44 near Sarcoxy. Witnesses say the truck went into the median with a large hole in the windshield. The driver suffered moderate injuries and was taken to the hospital. Highway Patrol officials say it's a good reminder keep, to keep an eye out for turkeys as they start to get on the move. Nearly 100 years ago, an, un, an unknown baby was found abandoned in a bush in Joplin. KOEM Samantha Walker has more on how a century-old unsolved mystery is inspiring a current day change. Walking through the Murfreesburg district in Joplin, it's clear to see there's a lot of history. The historic Murfreesburg Preservation Group recently released a story that's 100 years old. They're calling it a mystery in Murfreesburg. I actually stumbled across it when I was looking through news clippings looking for other things and I saw where somebody just abandoned a baby in the bushes at this house. In July 1945, a healthy baby girl was found bundled up outside of the home of the prominent Potlizer family on South Sargent Avenue. Then, you know, the things to take care of a baby were right next to her and they're like, hello, whose baby is this? There are numerous theories surrounding the parentage of the red-haired, blue-eyed baby but they were never identified. So we lean more towards maybe, except for just being a local, that maybe it was a soldier that had come through through the USO and through Camp Crowder during World War II and fathered that child. The true identity of the found baby has never been announced, but today she would be about 78 years old. According to Phillips, the mystery does point to the need for better options. There's just a lot of instances where they want to be able to, to, to make sure that baby is safe, but nobody know where it came from. Organizers are raising money to build a safe haven box in the Joplin Fire Station number seven. This would allow for infants 45 days or younger to be anonymously left with no prosecution should the baby have not faced neglect or abuse. And that's kind of the whole key. That's why people did the doorstep thing for so long because they didn't want to go to an orphanage. They didn't want to say, here, take my baby. They didn't want anybody to know who they were. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Organizers are still raising money for Joplin's Safe Haven Box. You can find more information on our website, koamnewsnow.com. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us for a first look at the weather. Well, it turned out to be a nice Sunday for us today. Cooler than what we saw yesterday, but still not a bad day. Just a little bit below where we should be for this time of the year. 56 was our high. Chilly start, 43. Average high is 60 degrees, the record 82, set back in 1982. It has been windy. We have these northerly winds kicking in. Uh, at times, we're getting gusts kind of 20 upwards to 25 miles per hour. It is going to stay breezy tonight, and then tomorrow, the winds will slowly kind of die down throughout the day. But pretty much clear skies. Not a whole bunch is going on here or across the entire four state area. We do have our next little system spinning out across parts of Arizona into New Mexico, and that will give us some rain chances later on in the week. Until then, we're gonna stay dry. It's also gonna get kind of cold for us tonight. We're gonna to look at all that coming up here in just a bit. Awesome, thanks, Doug. See you soon. Root Coffee House is getting into the season of spring today with a spring inspired painting class. Attendees were able to mingle with other artists while creating a new masterpiece to take home. The class included a canvas and step by step instructions. I just, I love to paint. Uh, I love having my paintings on the wall, and this is like so easy. She walks you through step by step. I've not had any experience, so. She's been very good to us, and if I need help, she'll step in and help me. And if I don't, that's fine. <laughs> the event was $30 per painter. Some local four staters today had the opportunity to shop for some new jewelry at a pop-up shop in Galena. It included three different stations, a charm bar, 
clay earrings, and a stack bar. That's stack, not snack. Officials say the event is a way to get a deep dive into different arts and talents. Get out and support uh, your local businesses. There's a ton of small businesses in the area um, and any just opportunity you can get out to help support it is greatly appreciated and just you know giving our time out and coming out and setting up is a way that we feel like we can give back and uh, interact. So. The shop was held at Erickson and Co. Mercantile in Galena, Kansas. Pittsburgh Community Theater's production of Biloxi Blues hits the stage this Friday. As one of the cast members, I'm giving you a behind the scenes look into rehearsals and how I, along with my fellow castmates, are preparing for this pretty cool show. Two, Two down, three, three down, four, four down, five. Six, down, seven. It just, uh, it's still a play that is um, appropriate for our times. Absolutely. And it hits on a lot of subjects, a lot of things that we're still dealing with. Oh, understood. Oh! These men were really entering into a time in their lives of fear and anger was all over the world. And he deals with that and he shows you how how they overcame their fear. I think it's funny. I enjoy it. I think there's plenty of jokes that are for the military community, but the general public will still understand them. Is that your opinion? In my opinion, yes, Sergeant. I really like the fact that he examines and is not afraid to address whatever it is in the room that needs to be addressed. Would you get in your fight? I'll fight you. Getting all the guys that never met each other into that brotherhood um, has been probably the best part about it. So getting to know everybody, um, hanging out with them after hours and stuff like that, um, getting comfortable with them because on stage we're, we're very close knit. The thing about doing a military show is you gotta get a military haircut. Sit down, soldier. It's hilarious, it's poignant, they'll laugh, they'll cry, they will be moved one way or another. I don't know about y'all, but I think, I think my haircut looks, looks pretty good. <laughs> Biloxi Blues will run March 22nd through the 24th. You can find a link to buy tickets for the show on our website, koamnewsnow.com. I hope to see you there. Coming up, some Neosho residents attend the Neosho Gun Show at the Newton County Fairgrounds. Plus, the KC Current has a new stadium. We'll have reactions from the fans that attended yesterday's big day. Today was the last day of the Neosho Gun Show. According to the NRA, gun shows are widely attended by Americans interested in firearms for defensive purposes, hunting, sports, recreation, and historical significance. We spoke yeah. with one vendor in the show about what he and other, sh the shows itself, were able to offer. Um, basically anything that has to do with the Second Amendment uh, or that type of activity, outdoorsmanship, hunting, whatever, you're going to be able to find here at, the, at, at a gun show. Uh, anything from knives to clothing to foods to uh, boots we have here. The event kicked off on Friday and ended this afternoon at 3 p.m. History was made yesterday in Kansas City as the KC Current kicked off its season in KPKC Stadium, the first stadium in the world dedicated to a women's sports team. Fans filled the stadium with teal and red for the first game against the Portland Thorns. Samantha Boring has more. A kickoff many have been waiting for. We drive by and it's just, you know. CP Casey Stadium is officially open, home of the Casey Current. Just really grown to be a really big fan of women's soccer over the years, and so I'm just so excited that our city has this team and we're able to have this great stadium. It's a big moment, especially with season tickets sold out for opening year of the stadium. Being able to watch an amazing team with amazing players and just the energy and it being in Kansas City. Fans from across the metro decked out in their teal and red. Today called for something a little bit fancier than normal. I'm like, this is the first women's sports stadium in the world, so I'm just going to go all in. Located in Berkeley Riverfront, 
fans found what works best for them when getting to the match. I was thinking about possibly parking here, but it's a downtown stadium, and so I am more than happy to just hit one of the many parking garages downtown. They had a fantastic bus system. Some used rideshare options, others took one of many shuttles or decided to purchase a parking pass. Just with having kids, we figured it would be uh, something that we could count on. And so, uh, yeah, we bought a parking pass, even though it was a little bit pricey. Fans hopeful the stadium and transportation options continue to evolve and grow. Any new endeavor has growing pains, I guess. So we're just trying to keep positive, open mind. No matter the track, thousands grab their tickets to witness history. Today just means so much more just being a woman and having girls. I play soccer and I always love watching soccer. Creating memories to last a lifetime and inspiring women and girls across the world with this end goal. A little later, how a Florida police department is working to keep visitors safe during spring break. Well, I hope you enjoyed your weekend and got outside a little bit. The temperature is pretty good. It was a little chilly outside today, especially with the wind. But yesterday on Saturday, we had really nice temps as we went into the upper 60s of four highs. Not the case today, but still not bad. Most of us 55, 56, 57 degrees during the afternoon. So it wasn't bad, but it is going to get a little bit cooler as we go into tonight and then again into your Monday. It's also been windy. Northerly winds. These are sustained winds kind of in that 15, 20, 25 mile per hour range. And then we've had gusts a little bit higher than that. Uh, the winds are going to stay kind of up there throughout the overnight hours for us tonight. Here's our future wind gusts. So by morning, we're going to still have those northwesterly winds at about 20 to 25. They come down a little bit late in the day tomorrow. They switch out of the south on Tuesday and really get moving by the time we head through the middle of the day on Tuesday. But what that's going to do in return is help our temperatures really warm up by the time Tuesday afternoon rolls around. All right, through the night, we're going to have clear skies. But look at this, down to 26 later on tonight. So it's going to be a nice hard freeze. We have just a few little clouds kind of shooting through. But in general, we have clear skies. We've got some rain down through parts of Texas. Here's our next little upper level wave spinning out across parts of Arizona and New Mexico and that wave. Uh, it's going to take its time, but it's going to start to head in late Wednesday into Thursday, giving us some rain chances by that point in time. So let me walk you through your week. Cold start, mid 20s, Monday morning. It's going to be frosty across uh, parts of the region as we go through the middle of the day. Still those northerly winds, chilly. Temps only right around 40, and then we only get to about 45, 46 degrees for a high, which is well below where we should be for this time of the year. Let's go into Monday night. Still cold, not as cold. We dip back near freezing, but check out your Tuesday. Look at this huge warm up as we press 70 by the time we get into Tuesday afternoon. So yes, cold, but it's short lived. 7 a.m., 26, 39 by noon, 44 by 4, plenty of sunshine. High temp of 45 for you on your Monday. Let's continue through the week. Let's go into Wednesday now. We do have a storm system starting to come out. May give us a random shower by Wednesday evening, but most of Wednesday is going to be dry. This is going to be a weak system, but still will give us some light showers. So now we're looking at Thursday, some light showers pushing through. And then again on Friday, a few light showers working through. But overall, temperatures minus tomorrow are looking pretty good this week. 45 tomorrow, 70 on Tuesday, 67 on Wednesday, still 64 on Thursday, 66 on Friday. So temperatures all week long are going to be good. We are going to have those hit and miss showers, especially the second half of the week and then uh, into this weekend. Also cooling down a little bit by the time we get into the weekend. All right. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it, sir. There's been a lot of buzz surrounding spring break and security in Florida this year, but one South Florida Police Department is seizing the opportunity to recruit talent on the beach this season. Ted Scouten has the latest from Fort Lauderdale. Sing-alongs, trivia games, Fort Lauderdale Police having fun with spring breakers. Are you guys ready? Yeah! All right, you got your thinking caps on, you're ready to go? But there's a bigger picture here. It's about engagement. But the whole reason why we're out here, we are hiring right now, Fort Lauderdale Police Department. 
Jumping onto ATVs, recruitment officers make their way across the sand. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? I'm the Texas Lockwood Full Auto Police Department. How you guys doing, all right? Letting spring breakers know they're looking for recruits. We are actively hiring for a police officer, certified, non-certified. Have you ever guys thought about a career in law enforcement before? With 40 new positions and eight spots that need to be filled, Detective Henry Lockwood sees if students are up to the challenge. Do you think you have what it takes to join the team? This is the agility test. All right, one, two, three, hit it. One, two, three. Aside from gauging physical capabilities. Looks like you got what it takes. I probably do. It's a chance to interact. It's like an open door, right? It pretty much allows them to come in and actually talk to us. And that resonates. Like anything else, it's a human connection, and that makes, I, I think it makes things easier to understand once you actually talk to a person. The goal is to pique students' interest enough to get about 100 applicants this spring break. If I wanted to get into law enforcement and have a cop come down here and be personable and get a competition going between guys, I mean, that gets you like excited, you know? Police hope that excitement spills into applicants. Really good job, by the way. Ted Scout, CBS News, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Coming up in sports, it's Selection Sunday as we preview the teams that made this year's NCAA tournament. Plus, Missouri Southern and Pitt State baseball wrap up their weekend series. Brock Baldridge shares the highlights and more of next. The Missouri Southern Lions and the Pittsburgh State Gorillas meet for the final time in the regular season. Southern won on Friday, Pitt State won on Saturday, and on Sunday the winner takes the series and some bragging rights. Little chilly out there on a sunny Sunday afternoon. The Lions face the Pittsburgh State Gorillas. We pick things up in the top of the third. Tregan Parker, the Web City kid, goes deep to right field and the outfielder is out of room and it's out of here. It's a two run home run and Missouri Southern takes a two to nothing lead. So we head to the top of the fourth inning now. Dylan Kirahashi Choi Fu makes a spinning throw and fires a bullet to first base for the out and the Gorillas get out of the inning. So to the bottom of the fourth inning now, Austin Warkins up at the plate, hits a fly ball deep into the gap and that's gonna bounce off the wall out there. Choi Fu will easily come in to score and Warkins picks himself up an RBI double. So Pitt State now trails two to one. On the mound for the Lions today, Web City native Kale McAllister was rolling. Eight innings pitched and seven strikeouts. McAllister gets a big swing and a miss here in the seventh inning, and he is fired up. Missouri Southern goes on to beat Pitt State 3-1. to one. The Lions win the series two games to one. Over to the softball diamond now. Pitt State softball team wraps up their final non-conference game of the regular season. Once again, the Gorillas continue to dominate. PSU wins their first game 10-4, then wins the second game 3-2. To complete the sweep, the Gorillas are 30-2 to begin the season. They add on to that 20-game win streak. Well, it is Selection Sunday for the NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Tournament. Some teams made it in and others got left out this year. We start with the Kansas Jayhawks, who are the number four seed in the Midwest region. The Jayhawks will travel to Salt Lake City to face the number 13 seeded Sanford Bulldogs. That game will be played on CBS. We'll have a late start for that one. That game is scheduled to approximately start at 8.55 Central Standard Time. Meanwhile, some questions were heading into the day regarding some bubble teams. The Oklahoma Sooners were left out of this year's NCAA tournament. OU was the first team out, and the Sooners men's basketball team announced that they have declined the invitation to play in the NIT tournament. So with that being said, the Sooners season comes to an end with a 20-12 overall record. However, the Kansas State Wildcats did not make it this year's tournament, but they did accept an invitation to the NIT tournament. The Wildcats will face the Iowa Hawkeyes on the road. That game will be played this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Over to MLB Spring Training, the St. Louis Cardinals face off against the Houston Astros. Top of the first now, Houston leading one to nothing. Jose Abreu says goodbye to that baseball. It's a two run jack. Houston takes an early three to nothing lead. Fast forward to the bottom of the eighth inning now. Tied up game, six to six. Brody Moore is up at the plate. The base is loaded, he'll touch them all. It's a grand slam and the St. Louis Cardinals go on to win the game, 10 to six. Over to spring training in Arizona, the Kansas City Royals face the Milwaukee Brewers tonight. Had a long rain delay in this one. They continued for a little while, but they decided to call off the game. And it's Milwaukee who defeats Kansas City 6-4. Well, there's your look for sports. We're back with more news after this. 
Today is St. Patrick's Day and these five states dominate when it comes to Irish American heritage and spirit. According to data from the U.S. Census Bureau, the top five states with the highest population of Irish, Irish heritage includes California, New York, Pennsylvania, Florida, and Texas. California has the highest population of Irish heritage with about 2.1 national million Californians that have roots in Ireland. Let's check back in with Doug for a final look at our forecast. All right, it's going to be a cold one tonight. We're going to dip back into the mid 20s for overnight lows. 26 for an overnight low 45. That's it. That's all we're going to get on Monday, but at least we're going to have the sunshine. Now it's uh, going to be windy and much warmer by Tuesday. Look at this high temps of 70 high temp of 67 on Wednesday. And a final sports note for us, sir. Yeah, you know, the NCAA tournament is up and rolling and you know, people are going to start filling out their brackets. They only have Thursday to do so. Did you fill out a bracket? I have not filled out my bracket, okay. but I do know one thing. The Kansas Jayhawks, uh, they're going to be in that four seat out in Salt Lake City. I think their fans are going to have to invest in some coffee because that game's going to start really late. Very late start to that game. I haven't filled out a bracket either. I'm always bad about it when it comes to this time of year, but Best of luck to all teams involved, especially KU. That's our time for now. From all of us here at KOAM, have a great night.